Okay, sound is on. Um, we will not get s uh, sounds on the speakers, but uh, the closest of you might hear a little bit of sound in the beginning of my presentation. Let's see. No. Okay, raise your hand if you felt a little bit nostalgic right now. <laughs> Yay! Okay, and raise your hand if you have missed Internet Explorer. Okay, none. <laughs> that's kind of good. So this is uh, an RK TV in Internet Explorer, and that's okay. Because in January 2021, we decided that it is no longer supported. No surprise, because we wanted the developer experience to be as best as possible and not be limited by a very few amount of users. However, I haven't shown you what nrk.no looks like in Internet, Ex Internet Explorer, and I'm going to save that till the end. <laughs> and in the meantime, you can think about how many stubborn individuals are still using Internet Explorer to browse the news at NRK today. Okay, but first, small step back and introduce myself again. Hello, my name is Ingrid and I work as a developer and tech lead at NRK and I have done so since 2018. Today I'm going to talk about how you can become a slightly better web developer for whom, you might ask, because I hadn't even thought about that this could be an, a biggest question. For your users, of course, or brukere in the region. Because this is the reason that we create products. And I think that as a developer, it's easy to create solutions that work best for yourself, because it's your computer. But I also believe that if you actually think about your user from a technical perspective, your product will actually improve. A little fun fact then, um, when I was making this presentation, I needed an illustration and I went to Google and I wrote Brukere and this was the first image I came up and I thought, oh, that's great. And then I realized that the person in the middle with the orange feather, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Agenda. I will start to talk about why I care about this and then I will talk about how internet users use the internet in 2024. And then I have tried to make some questions you probably should think about when you work as a web developer. And the goal with this presentation should be that you learn something and you have some things to consider while developing. Okie dokie. So I mentioned I work at NRK, the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation. You will not get more presentation than that. But these are our products. And I work at the team to the right, nrk.no, and we are the biggest single product at NRK. We have about 1.5 million daily users, and we are news-driven, but a broad entrance to all of NRK. So my reason to care about this is because we have very many users. And we are kind of required to say that our users it's the whole population. That means from teenagers to old people. And that means that our products need to work for many people at the same time. But it's also quite OK that we are <laughs> legally required to think about this, so we don't have a choice. The Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, Corporation is obliged to take special preparedness measures to ensure that information from the government reaches the population in time of civil emergencies and war. Wow. This means that we are equal to P1, the radio station, and NRK1 uh, to deliver information to the people if something happens in wartime. In practice, that means we should always be available. So there are two things we need to think about with this. First, cloud. 
front page of NRK and OI is running on three different data centers, two in Azure, one in Google, uh, which makes us redundant. And I'm not going to talk more about that. It's very cool. Come and ask questions later if you <laughs> think it's cool as well. But the second part is what I, I am going to talk about today, and that is code. <laughs> because the problem with this is that it doesn't help if your application is up and available if you still cannot get the information from the page. So that means that the code has to, works, has to work for everyone. And you might be thinking, what? That's not possible. And you're right. But I like to think about it that we have to do our best to always be available to as many people as possible. So this is why I care about this. And you might be thinking, but Ingrid, I don't have any specific emergency preparedness responsibility. That's a mouthful. So why would I care? And I think you should care because you hopefully have users, hopefully not just wide white old men. <laughs> but I hope that you kind of care about the users that they actually can use your site. And that leads us to, but how do the user use internet in 2024? And there are several things worth considering here, because many of our users use technology different from us developers. We're starting easy. This is statistics from global Global statistics from StatCounter for the last year. And this is how users use between mobile, desktop, and tablet. Tablet, not so many. Not growing, not declining either. Desktop has been declining for the past few years. Still declining. Mobile, ending for about 60% of our users. This is quite similar with our traffic at NRK. NRK.no, we usually say that we have 70% of our users on mobile and 30% on desktop. But recently, we have started saying 80% on mobile. That means that if you make an incredible desktop experience, almost no one will see it. Kind of depressing, but also worth noting. OK, so I say that they use their phones to browse the internet. What does that really mean? Bit curious, bit naive. I went to power and checked what's the cheapest and most expensive phone right now. I found these, both Android, both on sale right now, about 20,000 Norwegian kroners in price difference. And how do you think your website is on one device compared to the other? I kind of hope that it's better on the one to the left, because I hope you get something more than just being able to fold your phone for 20,000. And where on the smartphone scale do you think us developers usually are? Do we have more fancy phones than the average person? I think so. And these are new phones. How many here has a phone that is more than three years old? Yay! Five years? Yay! OK, someone, but very few. And you're thinking, maybe you're thinking, but this doesn't apply to me because I'm a web developer. I work in the browser. OK, so we're going to move to the browser then. Most people actually use the pre-installed browser they get with the device they purchase. I mean, it's insane, but it's true. And nothing wrong with any of these, except I would, I would not use the two ones on the left. <laughs> and people also ignore notifications to update. And they might not differ that much from developers, because, well, this is a screenshot from my Chrome when I made this <laughs> presentation. And just so no one feel left out, if you're a pleased web app developer <laughs> thinking, oh, it doesn't apply to me. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Most people don't update their apps, and the apps also use the browser on the phone, which is probably the pre-installed browser. OK, back to browsers. Um, I have so far told you that people don't update their browsers, and I thought I should add some statistics to prove this is correct. So this is from NRK.no. Most users use Safari, and then Chrome, and these down here, that's developers. <laughs> <laughs> and if we have a look at Safari, you see most people use Safari 17. That came out last year, so we still, but still we have 4.38% using Safari 16. And you think, that's not that many, is it? Well, for us, that's 65,700 daily users. That's quite a few. 
and then you think, but Chrome's different. Kind of is, because people are using multiple versions here. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> Chrome 56. I had to Google. It was released November 17, 2016, eight years ago. And we have 2.18% still using it. Is that a lot? That's 32,000 users daily. And does it really matter? Maybe, maybe not. But the problem with browsers is it's usually differences between the browsers, but also most browsers are not backward compatible. So that means that new features you create in newer versions of your browser will probably not work in this one. And that can give you a headache. And since we have talked about browsers and devices, I also need to discuss data usage. The average person used 4.83 gigabytes per month in 2020. I cannot decide if that's a lot or not. Uh, but I think it's worth noting because that means they don't use very much data as well if they browse on their phone and if they're not at home. And Okay, I don't like to use examples that are, aren't ours, but this is from uh, Pod.pen, and they had put this and very big NRK logo at the bottom. So I thought, well, okay. <laughs> if you wonder which podcast is the most listened to or least listened to, you can go here. And if you want to go all the way down to the bottom to find out which one is the least listened to, you have used 557 megabytes. And if you don't know if that's a lot or not, that's half an episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> or if you want another comparison, that means that if you have had this discussion 10 times in a month and checked, you have used more data than the average person in a month. And then, I mean, it's kind of nice to put on the front page of an arcade that I know. We do not have 1,000 images, but we're still doing 6 megabytes. And maybe you're thinking this isn't important to you, because my users are at home, they use Wi-Fi. What if they are not? And we're not talking about Monson traveling through Alaska. But maybe you want your users to be able to use a product while working from their cabin. Or what if they are on a train in a tunnel? And it's worth considering that what works very good on a poor, bad device is going to work great at a good device under special conditions as well. And suddenly it matters how big your page is. OK, so I said I was going to have some questions you can keep in, in mind when coding. So we're going to go to that section. We will start easy and with the hardest. Who is the product designed for? What is your main target group? Usually it's never teenagers and grandmas. It's usually somewhere in between. Uh, but if you are creating an internal system for developers, you can probably assume they have good computers, good Wi-Fi, good phone bill covered by the employee. Like us, we have at NRKNO, the front page editor CMS is created only for Windows with Chrome because we know exactly which machines they are using. You should not have that luxury. But if you're creating a product for young people, it's worth noting that they are they usually have a quite good device with cracked screens, and they are super greedy with data. So they tell us they don't want to check the news because it takes too much data, but they gladly watch the news on TikTok. <laughs> OK, once you know who you're creating your product for, you can start about thinking, what can or should I use? And this is like the most frustrating slide, because I want to put so much here, but I picked up something you need to think about. Starting with framework, size, speed, server-side rendering, those are the most important for me, at least. But also important is the support for functionality. In other words, can I use CSS container queries now? It, it's not new anymore, so I should be able to. Uh, for us, we rely on functionality over browsers. That's why we, we kind of don't say, do we support Internet Explorer? That's not interesting. It's interesting to see, can I use this functionality, yes or no? And we do that by combining can I use .com, browser list config, and auto prefixer. And if you haven't seen can I use .com, it's where you can look up CSS and JavaScript features and check this. What you can do, this tells you which browser is supported for each functionality. 
and from what version. But what you can do is if you have collected your own data, you can mount this in and you can actually see my users support this functionality with 95% coverage, for instance. Okay. We have chosen what we want to code in. Now we have two goals. One, we want the best possible developer experience, otherwise no one will do the job. You cannot old write old JavaScript just because you have users with old browsers. Secondly, how can you make the user experience the best for the most people while also fulfilling the other premise, good developer experience? So for us, we do polyfills and we have thresholds for them, which means I probably have to set, just mention what a polyfill is. <coughs> because I mentioned browsers are not backward compatible, so if you want to use new features in the browser, you need to have a polyfill for that for all browsers. And you might also transpile over JavaScript. But I'm not going to talk about that. The problem with this is that you get extra code to the old browser to make it work. So the people sitting on old bad devices are now getting even more code to make your code work. Seems kind of unfair. They were the on the slow devices in the beginning. Okay, but we do have that. And to try to make up for it, we try to do it dynamic. We don't load polyfills if you don't need them. I mean, you couldn't need polyfill for a page, but you don't need it before it's actually where the user is scrolling to. And the same comes with the uh, content loading. You don't need everything to play a video if the video is not even near the view. And that kind of leads to the next question. How can I load as little as possible? And then we need to talk about caching, or we don't need to, but I want to. <laughs> because the goal of caching is to avoid unnecessary data loading at least more than once. And we do, uh, they do caching at different levels. That is quite rele relevant for a web developer as well. We do element caching. For instance, if you have a widget on the front page, it's cached different from the rest of the web application. We do JavaScript splitting into different files, and then we cache them on versioning so that if you do some JavaScript changes, only some of the files will change, and the others will still be loaded from the cache. And I said size with frameworks, but because if you do choose to use React, I mean, I like React, but it's huge, and you decide to send it to the client, you should cache it. And you should not load it on every page load. And you should absolutely not care if they have different patched versions so that people get new versions of React based on how they're browsing your web application. And of course, if you can, server-side rendering with hydration and caching makes everything better for the user. OK, yes, we talked about how users are on the internet. And that leads to the last part to figure out how is it to be a user of mine. Because I have already said that everyone has not the, the same phone as you, the same number of uh, the same browser, and might not even have the same data in the month. So to figure out how it is to be a user of yours, you should test the product as a real user, or you could rewrite that and say, test the product as a shitty user. <laughs> and DevTool is your friend. Reduce network traffic, toggle caching, CPU. I mean, the, it's so much fun you can do. It seems like you're sitting on a bad computer after <laughs> toggling some things there. And if you have testing virtual browsers, some free, some quite expensive. But if you have them, do them bo both with automated testing and manual testing. OK. So anyone care to guess how many stubborn users we have that still uses Internet Explorer to read the news? Yay, 5,508. Is that a large number? I don't know. I, I think it's large, because I, I can't believe what world they live in. <laughs> but the percentage is still so small that we don't have to. We're not obliged to make it work. But for them, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Oh. I imagine everyone has this on on when using Internet Explorer. <laughs> 
Yeah, someone said to me that the reason they still use it is, be is be because it works, <laughs> and that might kind of be true. You see that some things are not working, and that's because we don't make a lot of effort to make it work, but so far it is working, and we're not going to remove it just to remove it. That would also be kind of stupid. And if you wondered, do Internet Explorer need any polyfills? Yeah, it needs all of them. <laughs> Summarizing very quick. Keep in mind, who am I making the product for? What can and should I use? How can the user experience be the best for the most people? How can I load as little as possible? And what is it like to be a user of mine? Yes, thank you. <laughs>